Making Metal Handle Cleavers, William Hovey Smith, 2017. I'm a knife maker, and we make rather large knives. And here we're talking about our rib chopper and our long handled cleaver. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And I'm in my knife shop today, and we're in the process of doing things large. This is a prototype of my rib chopper, which some of you have seen successfully demonstrated when I chopped the ribs off a wild hog that I shot in my backyard. Well, this is the prototype version made obviously of lawnmower blade material. And now we are working on a finished version. So this we have ground and polished and heat treated and now are finishing up on the polishing and the handling. We also have the order for one of our meat cleavers. Now this is the first order for these we have received. Uh, this is good stout stock. It's 1 8 inch across the back here. But the fellow who wants it is a large guy. And he wants a longer handle. So we're going to provide him with a longer handle on this and also make it out of pipe material, although out of this case out of aluminum pipe material, which will have a solid wood core running all the way back out to here to give him a good long swing with a large hand. The grind on this cleaver is also going to be a bit different from our rib chopper here. The cleaver has to cut really tough stuff, that is go through backbone. So we're going to give it an edge that looks more nearly like this than one more nearly like this. You can put a sharp edge on it, but this gives that edge more support and resistance from brittle failure with actually chopping on hard bone. So that's what we're going to proceed to do with this one. The first step is going to actually grind this off the handle and chop it here so we have a straight piece of steel on which we can attach our wooden shaft and ultimately our piece of pipe. The quickest way for me to remove this excess metal here is with the angle grinder, so I have it mounted in our vise. Now ultimately I will be seating this piece in a piece of wood, so I beveled it a little bit this way and also a little bit this way. Is we're mounting this on this press board using these two holes and wing nuts. And I'm going to address this surface before I do anything else to it. Now you can see how just a few passes freshen that whole surface. Now this side actually has markings on it, which obviously you do not want on the finished blade. Well, we've removed the, certainly the lettering. I'm now going to profile the edge. Now this is the coarsest grid I have on this machine right now. And with this, a single slip can ruin the whole piece of work. Well, we've now established an edge on the blade, and we have a nice even grind all the way across. Now we have the blade polished and ready to go into heat treatment, so it's looking pretty good right now. Both the rib chopper and the cleaver are going to have aluminum handles, and they're going to be cored with hardwood. Uh, this is an oak dowel, as you see, and we're going to turn it down so it fits on the inside of this aluminum pipe. We've got our wood now trimmed so I can slip it inside the pipe. But before we complete it, I have to trim this end, flush up the end of this pipe 
as well as drill two holes in here that will actually hold the handle to the blade itself. When we heat treat a knife like this cleaver, we like to run a full furnace full because it takes the same amount of heat whether we heat treat one blade or six or seven. The big flat cleaver blade is already inside this envelope and I have made one fold of the stainless steel foil. Now this foil has been used once, but I find I can reuse it with good results. We have the oven all loaded and ready to go. And we'll wait a Wednesday until Paul comes back and we'll heat treat it. Now a logical question is, this is the stainless steel foil that we made these envelopes that we've wrapped the knives in. And all of these that we put in have been used. That's the reason they are discolored. Now what happens if we take a knife like this and we heat it in the oven without using the foil? Will it make a significant difference in the product? Well, we're going to find out. We have our knives out of heat treatment now. And here's how they get. We found that this one that we put in without wrapping actually did oxidize rather badly. And in fact, has some deep tips in the blade because of it. So using this foil actually does do good. So we tested that hypothesis. Uh, these blades to our big flavor. We'll see how it did. Unveiling here. I'm making two end caps. This is actually going to be the guard and this is being shaped so it actually fit inside the pipe here and give a seal. Now this will also have to be pierced in this direction to allow for the blade to be insert in here. And we're doing most of this work with Dremel tools. I've used the cutoff wheel here to do most of the simple shaping and now I have a grinding wheel on it and we're going to do smoothing with it so we'll get a good flat bed across this surface. I have pre-drilled a fence of holes here and then taken the Dremel tool and widened this out so ultimately we'll be able to slip this tang all the way through now we have that part of the notch deepened and we'll reverse it and start working on the other side. Now we can use the old Dremel scroll saw which has a very thin blade and I've actually put it inside the area we're going to cut. And I'm going to use that saw to actually finish cutting out and freshening out the hole where it needs to be and we have a hole. We now have the guards fitted to both our rib chopper here and our cleaver. You can see in this picture the difference between the two styles of blades. Now the cleaver's blade is much thicker in this direction whereas the rib chopper's blade is longer and thinner in this direction. But we have the guard on, we have our wooden insert already ground and drilled and the next thing to do will be to finish this guard and install the two pins here and install our pipe and complete the finishing of the end pieces. Uh, this is a piece of... 
Polishing and fitting will be continued in part two. I am the author of a series of books. These include Backyard Deer Hunting, Extreme Muzzle Loading, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, and all of these feature chapters on knives. I am also the author of a series of e-books on muzzle loading guns. These include muzzle loaders for hunters, shooting and maintaining your muzzle loader, and hunting big and small game with muzzle loading pistols. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 650 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless. <laughs>